Hello and welcome back my fellow path integrators. Today we have a beautiful Bernoulli differential equation without coefficients because I wanted to keep it a bit clean. Those coefficients sometimes get a little bit confusing. And we're going to have a look at how to solve this equation. It's actually wonderful. So let's start. The first thing that I want to clarify is that uh, as a variable to differentiate with respect to, um, we choose t, so the differential equation is the, differ, um, the derivative of y with respect to t is equal to y of t minus y of t to the power of alpha. And the second thing that I would like to clarify um, up front is that we assume alpha to be some real constant, but it should not be zero or one because that would be boring, right? Okay, so what are we doing to solve this equation here? Let's put it down here, bam. So what we're going to do is we are going to apply a substitution. So our substitution will be set of t being y of t to the power of one minus alpha. So from now on, I will omit the of t because we now know that the whole thing is dependent on t. Okay, so this means that y is equal to z to the power of 1 divided by 1 minus alpha. Now, we can plug this into the equation here, but we have to take the derivative of y. So we have to take the derivative of this expression here, and we have to apply the chain rule for that. So if we get the derivative, we are getting first as a constant factor 1 divided by 1 minus alpha, then times z to the power of alpha divided by 1 minus alpha, and then times the derivative of z. So what we are doing now is we rewrite this part here, because we know that y is equal to z to the power of 1 minus alpha. So that expression here must be y to the power of alpha. So what we get is 1 divided by 1 minus alpha times the derivative of z times y to the power of alpha. Okay, now we can plug this into the equation up here. So what we're getting is instead of the derivative of y, we have 1 divided by 1 minus alpha times the derivative of z times y to the power of alpha is y minus y to the power of alpha. So this is our new differential equation. What we do now is we divide by y to the power of alpha on both sides. So what we get is the derivative of z is equal to y to the power of 1 minus alpha minus 1. So this here, again, we already know this. This is z because the definition of y was z to the power of 1 minus alpha. No, sorry, <laughs> I got that wrong. Um, that was z is equal to, one, uh, to y to the power of 1 minus alpha. Got a little bit confused myself here, yeah, I'm sorry. All right, no, why did I delete that? We need that. Okay, so what we're doing now is our new differential equation is 1 divided by 1 minus alpha derivative of z is equal to z minus 1. Or if we rewrite that a little bit, then we have minus z is equal to minus 1. So this is a um, first order linear differential equation. So un unlike the Bernoulli equation, which was like a not first order, so it could be quadratic or cubic or anything because alpha could be anything. Now, now we have a first order uh, differential equation and it is uh, inhomogeneous. So in general, our solution z of t would be some homogeneous solution plus some particular solution. So what we're going to do first is we're going to search for the homogeneous solution. So let's take a look at the homogeneous equation, which means omitting this perturbing term here, the minus one, which is just a constant, and this will come in easy later. All right, so the homogeneous equation is one divided by one minus alpha times the deriv derivative of z is equal to z. So now we write the derivative of z, so we just write here 
d set over dt is equal to z. And what we do now is we rearrange the terms. So this is a separation of variables, differential equation. So what we get in the end is d set over set is equal to one minus alpha times dt. We integrate on both sides and rearrange and then what we get is that z is equal to some constant times e to the power of one minus alpha t. So this is our homogeneous solution. Now we have to find the, so we are right here homogeneous, now we have to find the particular solution. And for the particular solution, what we assume is that it will be of the same form as our perturbing function here, which is a constant. So what we assume here is that set P of t is some constant a, and that we plug into our inhomogeneous equation, which is, where do we have it? Here. We plug that into this equation here. So let's put it down here. So we plug in set p, so we have 1 divided by 1 minus alpha times the derivative of set p with respect to t minus set p with respect to t is equal to minus 1. So we just plug in a, so the derivative of a here, what, is 0, because a is a constant, and then we have we are left with minus a being minus one. And this just means that a is one. And in the end, we have that z, our final solution to the linear differential equation, is our homogeneous solution, which was some constant c times e to the power of one minus alpha t. So we plug that in. Constant c times e to the one minus alpha t and then plus the particular solution, which is just one. But we wanted the original solution to our Bernoulli equation. So the Bernoulli equation was y, derivative of y is y minus y, uh, not squared, uh, but to the power of alpha. So our substitution was that z is equal to y to the power of one minus alpha, so y being equal to z to the power of 1 divided by 1 minus alpha. So this means that our final y, let's write it with a t, y of t is this set here. So c times e to the power of 1 minus alpha t plus 1 and the whole thing to the power of 1 divided by 1 minus alpha. So this is our final solution for some general arbitrary alpha. If we plug in two, then we get the classic logistic equation. So we have y prime is equal to y minus y squared. This is the, lo the logistic equation. And all we have to do now is into this formula, we have to plug in two. So our y of t in this case would be c times e to the power of 1 minus 2 is minus 1, so we have minus t plus 1, and then 1 divided by 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So this is 1 divided by 1 plus c to the e to the power of minus t. So what we got here as a solution is the logistic function, or as some of you may know it as the sigmoid function, which also plays a crucial role in machine learning, more specifically in neural networks. So yeah, this is how we solved the Bernoulli equation for arbitrary alpha and got to the logistic equation. Was quite nice, right? I hope you enjoyed this calculation and sorry for <laughs> some spelling mistakes. Anyway, um, if you like this, leave a like and uh, hope to see you in the next video. Bye.